In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my 37 week update. We're full term, baby! Oh my God, I'm so excited. And then also I wanna share my pregnancy journey the second time around. Cause it's been, it's been a journey to say the very least. So every morning we me and Seiji we pretty much pretty much every morning we go out for a morning walk and we come to this spot near there's a playground over there and a field and stuff and we just kind of find a spot eat some fruit to nourish our souls get some sunlight some fresh air so it feels good you know doing this every single morning and um, so let's get into this video okay first let's get a full shot of this uh, this belly Oh yeah, this is a full term belly, baby. I love it. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited because when I had said she was premature, she came at 31 weeks. So I definitely wasn't this big. And, um, I'm going to say, sit back. You want that? Can you leave? trying to play with the leaves okay so it wasn't this big and then also with a premature baby there's a lot of stuff that comes with it she had to stay in the NICU for a month and um, don't eat that here we have fruit you can eat you want some peach is that so there was just a lot that came with her being premature and plus even now that she's a year old there's still follow-ups and therapy that we are doing for her so you know a premature baby isn't just like oh, a couple days in the NICU or whatever however many weeks or months you might spend in the NICU it can be years of work to get your baby back caught up and though Sage is doing extremely well we are so appreciative of her um, progress and we really don't have any concerns. It's just that, um, you know, it's best to do these follow-ups just to make sure that everything is all good. All right, so let's get into this pregnancy. So this is my second baby and Sage is going to be 14 months when this baby is born, as long as we keep going towards my due date, because right now she is a little bit over 13 months, but um, we got three more weeks and I, when I hit full term, I was just so elated inside. I felt so accomplished. I feel like me and my baby, we made it, we did it. Um, um, this pregnancy has been very trying on me in an emotional and mental way. Mental, my mental health has been compromised. My emotional health, excuse me, my emotional health has been compromised as well. And so here we go, this is how it all started. So back in December, I found out that one of my grandmothers had passed away. And so she lived in Virginia and so I was preparing to fly home back to Virginia for her funeral. And um, the day that I was preparing, I remember I had went out to go um, do some light shopping because I don't have any winter clothes. It is December. I really truly converted to being a South Florida girl. And so I went to, I went to the store and I remember being in the, gro in the, in the, um, in the shopping store and, um, I was, um, something stopped me in my tracks and I was like I think I'm pregnant and like I just felt that and so that day on my way home I went and I grabbed some pregnancy tests and took a test or two maybe two I took you know I took one by myself and then I took another one later on that day and sure enough I was pregnant and I told Kellen and I was like look and Sage was six months at the time it was a complete shocker because our plan was to wait until she was 18 months to try again but we got pregnant a whole year earlier <laughs> so 
Um, and what was also very interesting was the date of my last period was the same date of my last period with her. So literally a year to date, this baby was conceived after she was conceived. So it was just kind of like, wow, okay, we're doing this all over again. Here we go. So, um, but at that time, again, I wasn't able to process all of this information because my grandmother had just passed away and I was getting ready to travel, traveling with her as well. Um, it was, was it our first time traveling, Seiji? Yeah, I think that was your first time on a flight. Yeah, so it was our first time flying and um, I just wanted to, you know, prepare and get all that stuff together. So did that, didn't really focus on the fact that, shit, I'm going to have a baby in nine months. So went home, we did the funeral and all of that. I came back and still grieving, you know, and still not really even focused on my pregnancy as much as I wanted to be at the beginning and then you know there was other things that were going on that were also taking my attention away from being able to focus in on the fact that there's new life inside of me and so I was just really in a bad place when it came to my emotional health all right and then Three weeks after my grandmother passed, my other grandmother passed. Um, and this is my mother's grandmother, my mother's mother, and she lived here in Florida, so um, I didn't have to travel. But the good thing was, when I got the call about my grandmother, she was still alive, and um, they prompted me to come and spend time with her, which I was so grateful for because due to the pandemic, I hadn't seen my grandmother the whole time that I was living here in South Florida. I had already been here well over a year, but due to the pandemic, my grandmother, she was 98 years old when she passed and everybody was taking the precau precautions to make sure that she would stay um, healthy. So I hadn't seen her and I've been wanting to see her and just, um, you know, hoping to spend some time with her because I just felt like, she's 98 years old how much time do we really have together you know so um so I was glad that I got the call before she transitioned and I was able to um you want to open and so I was able to spend um some time with her and though she um for those of you that have been following me um on social for a couple years now you know that uh, my grandmother has dementia so she doesn't she didn't always remember who I was and there was a time when I came and I was her caretaker for about two weeks and that was such a beautiful time for us to spend together and bond and um, there were moments that where she did remember who I was and um, I cherish all of that time together and so um, so yeah, so fat, back to when I spent time with her and then she ended up transitioning that evening. I was there, I stayed there the whole day because I just, I don't know, I just felt like that was gonna be her final day and I wanted to be there the whole time. So, dealing with two grandmothers transitioning within three weeks, exactly three weeks, both of them transitioned on a Monday um it was a lot <laughs> it was a lot it was a lot to process and to understand and you know though i i yeah you need some help i need help though i understand i understand life and death and I have a different outlook on it because I feel as though when someone transitions in our family, especially an elder, we are now granted a new ancestor who is going to look out for you. But at the same time, it was very hard to just process the fact that these two women that I love deeply and I 
are were a huge part of my childhood, my upbringing, my moral compass. These two women were the ones who brought me to church and taught me, you know, about right and wrong and how to just, just life, you know, and they were both very wise and I don't know, it's just, it was a lot, it was just, it was so much. <laughs> it was so much to take on emotionally in such a short time. Three weeks, three weeks. So, this is, uh, we're now into January, and at this time, I'm still feeling just the angst of, like, feeling like, okay, I'm grieving, but I'm, I'm feeling a little, like, sad because I'm not able to really connect to my baby because my mind is somewhere else and um, and I also share more about what was going on with me it was more things that were also going on but I'm not quite ready to share that yet because I'm still processing and understanding some of that stuff and but emotionally I was a wreck I just was not feeling I was just feeling very down. I was feeling very discouraged. I was just like, I don't know, I don't know what to do right now. And so as the time went on, um, you know, there were times where I really focused on, I was like, okay, like I'm getting better, I'm feeling better. Okay, I'm back now. <laughs> um, the video, I had to cut the video because for well, one my phone overheated for some reason and then the sky opened up on us and it just started raining out of nowhere <sighs> so let's keep the video going all right make sure we got a nice good angle here we are under this shelter so we are good <sighs> okay you ready sagey yeah let's do it so yeah like so like i was saying there were moments where i was um <laughs> starting to feel better and then consciously checking in with myself and checking in with baby to connect and because I know that your emotional wellness and mental health while you're pregnant is so important it's not just about what you're eating it's not just about um you know how much water you're drinking and exercise and yoga and stretching it's also about how you are taking care of yourself mentally and emotionally during this time period so um but again the last since i found out i was pregnant it's been this up and down up and down dealing with um some things at home dealing with grieving still also being pregnant and having an infant slash toddler who turned one in Jan in June and um, you know it can be a lot because she requires me to pick her up and she's not walking quite yet and even if she was walking you know you still got to pick up your one-year-old and um, yeah it's just been a lot like physically it's been a lot but the good thing is um, I have been able to rest when I need to rest for the most part and towards the end like I guess starting probably about two weeks ago I put myself on like what I called a modified um uh, bed rest and just have been trying to stay in bed as much as possible do my work from bed and that's been I think that's been working out because we made it this far we made it to full term I'm due August 27th, so we're almost there. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited. And in another video, I will be sharing my birth plan and all of that. But with Sage, my birth plan was to give birth at home, but it didn't work out that way because at 31 weeks, you should not be delivering, it, uh, delivering your baby at home. And so, come on, can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Mwah. Thank you. So,
So, yeah, so I'm gonna share my whole birth plan in another video, but just know that. And so another thing too was, I did take some time from social media, though I was like sharing here and there, not really sharing personal stuff, but sharing, you know, other 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 content from social media i really wasn't in a space where i could be present on social media and i just kind of went quiet because i needed to you know sometimes social media can be a lot and you really have to what's that you want to come come no don't no 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 that's the microphone you're not playing with that okay that's so everybody can hear me Hey, 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 come here. You got the phone case? You want your milk? Okay. Oh. You want this? Okay, hold on, we all, let's get the baby. Let's get the baby straight. No, you just want the top. Okay. So. So yeah, um, so yeah, this, 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 this pregnancy has been, has been very, <laughs> very interesting. Um, consciously, I've done my best to uh, treat my body well, to eat right, of course, still plant-based. Um, and actually when I found out I was pregnant, I think we were fruitarian and then transitioned back into eating more cooked food. And so now I would say I eat, um, I eat, I still eat a lot of raw food, especially in the morning time. I eat fruits and smoothies and um, maybe do like overnight oats, um, ah. salads, things like that, but also incorporate cooked oatmeal and then cooked meals for dinner or um, typical around the house. Um, but I have treated myself throughout this pregnancy. I've treated myself. I've had oatmeal raisin cookies from Sprouts that are so bomb. And they come in a box of 12. <laughs> and I've had bread and I've had, um, oh my gosh, at the farmer's market that we go to, there's this Ethiopian spot. And though I would still consider that plant-based because they don't use any meat replacements and it's all um, lentils and veggies and things like that. Um, that's my little treat too. Um, and then, yeah, you know, and like I've eaten out a few times here and there, but for the most part, I am, I've been plant-based. Um, I haven't moved my body as much as I would want to, because again, I just mentally did not have the time, the space, I should say, the mental capacity to get into a good flow of, of, yoga and exercise and all of that so that's something that i wish i was able to focus more on but i did not and so now that i am here at this part of my pregnancy we've been going for a walk every morning and that really helps um especially because i would say physically my hips are the only thing that really give me any problems but going for this morning walk really helps to open things up for me um and oh and then i guess what you might be wondering is like what kind, of what kind of symptoms have i had or cravings from what I, I don't really have cravings with sage i didn't have any cravings at all and um even with this baby i haven't had any specific cravings and i'm like oh i other than, oh you know what no popcorn popcorn was probably like one of <laughs> one of those cravings but other than that, I can't say there was anything that I was like, oh my God, I have to have right, right now. Um, and then as far as symptoms, again, I haven't had any symptoms that were adverse. I wasn't, didn't have any morning sickness, nausea, um, heartburn. Another, oh, when I was pregnant with Sagey, I around week 14 14 to 17 weeks of being pregnant i did have this congestion thing going on i didn't have that this time and um yeah so physically i don't really have pregnancy symptoms that's and it was just such a blessing and i think the only thing is like 
low energy, you know, because I'm carrying around extra weight. Um, so far in my pregnancy, I've gained 11 pounds. I believe I'm at 11 pounds. I go see the specialist this coming week. And so we'll get to see what the baby is like weighing in at, which I never believe those things. Cause every time I see other people mention it, they'll say, yeah, my doctor, the, the, the growth scan said, baby's nine pounds and then baby comes out six pounds. So I don't know about them things, but I'm gonna put it on, push. So I don't know, but we'll see. You know, I'm curious to see what the doctor says. Um, and I think that's it. I can't, if you all have other questions about my pregnancy journey so far, I will be in the comment se section answering any of those questions. So feel, to, feel free to drop your questions there. And um, yeah. Oh, and if you missed it, check out last week's video where I shared the baby's setup where baby's gonna be sleeping um my little diaper snack bar breastfeeding set um station that i've set up all of that stuff so um so definitely check that out if you haven't seen last week's video but i think we're gonna get out of here before any more rain comes i don't know if it's gonna rain anymore today but i want to get myself in the house back in the bed <laughs> it's time for that okay you want to say bye-bye can you say bye-bye look you gotta put this down can you say bye-bye bye-bye look Sagey. say bye-bye no you say bye-bye they're here to see you they're not really here to see you okay all right, y'all. Peace.